We are entering into game one of Winter Series 2, the round of 64. Spawning in the west of the map, in blue, we've got the Viper, the GOAT of AoE 2, and very possibly the GOAT of AoE 4. And spawning in red, in the east of the map, playing Roos like his opponent, we have Nushal Bear, one of the best ever AoE 3 players, and starting to create some serious inroads in AoE 4. Uh, let's begin to take a little look at this map, see how we feel the spawns are done. Of course, there are no map seeds in the early rounds of these events, so there is a little element of luck. Lidicourt, taking a first glance, any thoughts on this map? Looking at this map real quick, you can notice that Viper's gold mines are both on the same side, quite exposed, far away from the town center, far from ideal. Whereas for Nush, his primary gold mine is a little closer to his town center. The other one is quite far out down here, but for the Rus, luckily they don't have to mine that much gold, so that's not that big of a disadvantage for Viper. But if this game goes long, such an exposed pair of gold mines for Viper could be quite concerning. Looking at those wood lines, they look pretty even. Maybe you would take the Vipers in that it's a bit safer being behind his base, but I would have thought Nushal Bear will be fine protecting his own wood line there, so not too much. Now we enter into this race to collect that bounty. Uh, what, what are your thoughts in terms of how many scouts you would expect each player to pop out before transitioning to villager production? I think at this point you open up with three simply because that is probably the best uh, value slash investment that you can make. Three scouts allow you to roam through the map. You can use one or two of them to hunt for deer and you can use at least one to look for wolves because wolves are by far the most gold efficient huntable when it comes to bounty for the roost as you see by priority is being trailed by two here. So you probably go for free and you only add four, five, six once you get closer to Feudal Age, because you want to get to Feudal Age as fast as possible, get that uh, Golden Gate up as soon as possible, because you want to have those uh, Golden Gate tickets start piling up, so you can delay your additional scouts until you get professional scouts for yourself. Yeah, so def definitely makes sense. Now, there are obviously a number of different directions uh, either player could go in uh, a little bit early to see if either player does something a little bit uh, a little bit unconventional. So far, we're not seeing anything special. In terms of the early game, both players going around the map trying to get up that bounty. We can see we've got that one wolf chasing Nushal Bear's, um, Bear's scout, which is what he's obviously trying to make happen. He's got the other scout there. Uh, Viper, in the meantime, looks like he took down that whole herd there. So in terms of we could take a little look at the early bounty collecting and see if either player's a little bit ahead. It looks like it's not really the case. Nushal Bear at 270, Viper at 225, but he's being trailed by a wolf, so he's going to get to that tier 2 as well. This is as close as it could possibly be when it comes to a Rus Mirror. Usually, your benchmark is getting to that second tier, because that unlocks extra resource gathering rate for your food, and also increases your gold trickle on your hunting cabins. The ideal to get to is something like 370, because that reduces the amount of tickets by one that you need to get to Castle Age, but... 370 is quite difficult to get to, especially in a Rus Mirror, because both of you are racing for that hunt. It is possible against civilizations that don't really have a good uh, number of scouts in Dark Age, so let's say uh, Abbasids, that can't really make scouts other than using the Town Center for it. So Abbasids won't have a ton of scouts out, for example, and that allows the Rus to go for uh, a lot more bounty than usual, so that allows them to get to like 370, 380, but in a Rus Mirror, Anything above 250 is perfectly fine. Now we see the Viper has just about got up to age two ahead, but there's a very, very tight margin in that initial bear just a second or two away from joining him. And there it goes. So this looks to me to be like an incredibly even start between the two players. And we're, we're going to have to end up see what happens. Now, are you expecting to see any early aggression from either player? What, what could Nishal Bear look to do to try and to try and put some pressure on Viper and get him out of his normal rhythm here? From what I'm seeing, he's just going to play standard and he believes in his skills. Notice how he's hiding all three of his scouts close to Viper's herd. Viper is also lurking close to the hunt of his opponent. Because Bruce is one of the fastest civilizations to get to professional scouts and decent amount of scouts. So you're almost always going for the hunt of your opponent first. In the end, this will just turn out to be a rather even trade because Viper is going to steal some carcasses 
from Nushalbeer, and Nushalbeer will do the same thing. So ultimately, the two players will have pretty much the same amount of carcasses to work with. Definitely makes sense. Always interesting, of course, when we get into more of the mid game and there are still carcasses on the map to see that to see that APM fight as they're trying to continue collecting carcasses during um, some potential aggression. Obviously, very important here. We're seeing has have, has Nushal Bears professional scouts come in yet? Doesn't look like it. Whereas the Viper is Viper's got his professional scouts in, so he's already carrying those carcasses back. And now Nushal Bear is uh, is often doing the same. So. Uh, very much mirror gameplay in a mirror matchup so far. Absolutely. One thing to note is that Viper only had three scouts out. He actually popped out his uh, professional scouts in the moment he reached Feudal Age, and he didn't add any additional scouts. As you see, he's only at four. Whereas for Nushal Bear, he popped out an additional scout before getting the professional scouts in, and he's getting in some more. This is the first major difference between the two players. Viper is like, okay... We are both racing for a hunt. Do I actually need seven scouts here to bring in my own hunts? Probably not. Whereas Nushal Bear is just getting some more out in order to be able to steal some from Viper. So Nushal Bear is trying to go a little more aggressive on the hunt, but unless he can take some carcasses away from Viper's side with those extra scouts, that investment might not be worth it. Definitely. So that's going to be something that we'll keep an eye on during this match, with whether he can overcome that villager production deficit with a couple of extra carcasses um going to be very interesting to see i mean it looks like both what they were doing and had a pretty considered build order in terms of their approach to that so uh, both have obviously fought this through we can certainly say that both players are going to have played bruce on this mirror plenty of times before so it's something they're going to be familiar with and uh, and we'll see what ends up happening in the meantime, we already see the H3 landmark, the Abbey of the Trinity, going down there for the Viper. So getting straight up to H3, putting 12 villagers on that. So he's going to be aging up very, very quick. Uh, we're going to go and check on Nushal Bear in a second. But Viper just going straight up to H3. No thought about military production at this point. Bringing those carcasses. And let's see, Nush, there he clicks Abbey, Abbey of the Trinity about six or sevens behind. And he's also doing it with 12 villagers. So we are really seeing the mirror of all mirrors here. Both players aging up. Of villagers on Abbey of the Trinity seconds apart. So, going to be interesting to see where this goes, um, but I think the mirror is definitely living up to its name. Absolutely. Viper has nailed Feudal Age timing by like 5-10 seconds of an advantage, and that helped him get professional scouts a tiny bit earlier, and he's going to have a tiny bit of an advantage going into Castle Age. And in this Rus Mirror matchup, it's not even a priority to get your those archer ranges up by the time you get to Castle Age. Your priority is to get to Castle Age and start making Warrior Monks as soon as possible, because as much as you have been racing for the Huntables, now you're racing for the Relics, and the military presence for the opponents will be somewhat minimal, so your number one priority is to get those Warrior Monks out as fast as possible. We've talked about how exposed Viper's gold mines are, we also have to highlight how good the Relic spawns are for him though, so he's gonna get compensated for that bad gold mine spawn, with some exceptionally good relic spawns, most of the relics are closer to his base compared to the ones uh, you shall bear. As we often say, when it comes to a balanced map, it doesn't mean that it needs to be perfectly symmetrical, but that each players have the kind of negatives and positives that add up to a fairly balanced situation. So sometimes if you see the Viper with worse gold mines, slightly better relics, it can lead to a balanced match. So it's good to see that we've got a map that seems roughly fair overall incredibly clean so far by both players in terms of that age three timing which we expect to see at this level so let's see what happens and now we've got in even the compositions looking very very similar so on high view of course we've got these hidden forests so the scouts are about to run into each other there and it looks like one scout is going to go down there for initial bear which it will but that's very nice for the viper and he's all together already putting up a uh, an interesting uh, little mass there absolutely that was a trade-off there for Nushal Bear. He could use those scouts just to absorb arrow fire with his army, but he can also utilize that scout to just keep track of Viper's army, and that's quite important. Here comes the Warrior Monk trying to yoink that relic away. But that's quite a lot of Force Archers here for Viper, and a Warrior Monk will be taken down. That's a massive loss for Nushal Bear. Very expensive, and now Viper comes in with his Warrior Monk. 
and that takes that relic away. That is an absolutely massive swing in just seconds there as the Viper prevents it being taken, takes down a Warrior Monk and takes the relic. I mean, is that, that, that feels that decisive. It's very early in the game, but that was a huge moment. Being more military damage on his opponent, taking the relic away and his opponent losing the Warrior Monk. That, that felt pretty big. That's an enormous swing over there because the biggest problem that you're going to have when it comes to warrior monks is how many you have. And if you look at Nusho Bear, he doesn't even have more gold to produce more warrior monks. Viper is already getting his gold trickle from his Abbey of the Trinity, so he can continuously produce warrior monks if needed, whereas Nusho Bear isn't really able to. So your biggest problem when it comes to losing that warrior monk is that you will be one less warrior monk on the field. So you will have a tougher time picking up those additional relics. And if you look at Viper, he's already sitting on three relics and getting a monastery up, so he's confident that he's going to get a fourth one. Whereas for Nusho Bear, he's looking for a relic down south over here, but that's also already gone. Viper might be on five relics in this because Nusho Bear... Okay, Nusho Bear picked up one, so it is going to be four to one, but that is a quite decisive advantage in a Rus Mirror. And as we said, when it comes to a mirror, these tiny differences make just a huge swing in terms of the game. Even a one relic differential between two evenly matched player uh, can be decisive and can be game winning. And here we're looking at a situation where it's a four to one relic. It's really hard to see how Nushalbe is going to close that up. And in the meantime, the Vi well, both players actually are taking out their sacred sites. So almost at identical timing as well. And that's also going to provide more gold income. What I would love to see from either of these players is taking down those boars, each of them giving 75 gold upon killing it. So that's definitely one way you can use your horse archers, you won't even take any damage. And if you do kill both of them, that's going to be 150 gold. That could push you close to that tier 3 bounty, and that's Viper coming in with that. 75 gold for free. These are small differences, but those are ones that can swing a battle in your favor. But... On the other side, we do have an early Boyars Fortitude upgrade for the Nusha Bear. This upgrade will give a ton of extra health to those horse archers, and as much as the relic situation is important in mirrors, it's also important to take fights uh, when you have a tiny bit of technology advantage, because one good fight can swing this battle in your favor quite massively. Did Nusha Bear just come in and manage to steal that boar kill? I think he did. He just came in and just took the got the very last shot off on that boar in the in, nope. in the mid map. Nope. Viper's at 485, so he must have gotten that second one, and Nusha's oh. still at 310. So Viper got it, and if Viper has three more sheep to kill, he is going to be at 500, and that's once again going to give him an extra five percent of food harvest trade bonus. Also, a nice trickle of uh, extra gold for those hunting cabins. Here come the horse archers for the Viper. He hasn't gotten the Boyar's Fortitude upgrade yet, though. So I feel like Nush has to fight right now and trade off armies while he has the technology advantage. In the meantime, a raid coming in from the Viper. Hey, he's probably... He might be able to take out a couple of villagers. Another... A he's going to be able to take out a couple. Probably one... At least one villager goes down there. In the meantime, Viper's also got that second middle uh, sacred site in the middle of the map. So that puts the pressure on Nushalbe, who's going to want to go and neutralize that because the gold didn't come. And it looks like the two armies are now meeting each other in the middle of the map. And this could be pretty decisive. Nushalbe looks to have somewhat of a military advantage here. Quite surprising that Viper's choosing to take this confrontation when he's so far ahead in terms of economy. And he took some... Pretty significant damage there. Viper found himself caught in the middle of the map in a bit of an awkward situation. And has Nushal Bear found himself right back in this game here with a pretty decisive uh, military advantage in the middle of the map? Absolutely. That was a clinic from Nushal Bear. He knew exactly Viper was going to retreat and he intercepted his army in the middle. That's the power of the stealth forests in this game. Viper wasn't expecting that army there. And you see, Viper just finished with the Boyar's Fortitude upgrade. That's exactly what I was referring to. When you invest into an expensive upgrade like Boyar's Fortitude, you have to take that fight before your opponent gets it. And that's exactly what Nusha Bear was able to do. And now he's the one putting the pressure on Viper, harassing that food economy. And if Viper isn't having a reliable food economy, it's going to be very difficult to replenish those horse archers. Now the question is, Viper, I mean, obviously an extremely talented player, one of the very best make a mistake letting himself get caught up in that fight when he had such a big economic advantage and the upgrade the boyer's upgrade still coming in i mean he really wanted to wait another 30 seconds at least to take that fight 
absolutely. He was just not in a position to wait because he wasn't expecting that army to be in there. The warrior monk also came in here with the saint's blessing for a brief moment. And you see that hit on that horse archer that gives the saint's blessing to these horse archers once again gives a swing in the favor of Nusha Bear. And that is pure desperation from the viper over here. At this point for Nush, he's doing the right thing, I do believe. He's focusing down the horse archers of the opponent because he just wants to grind down those numbers. He has some reinforcements come in, but he could also focus a couple of villagers here. And ultimately, he lost a significant portion of his army, but he has to be happy with the situation. Viper is down to 28 Let's villagers. take a look at that villager difference right now. How, many, how much damage was done there? That felt like a lot of villagers going down. That was a ton of villagers. 28 versus 47 is the count, and... Why Viper is sitting on four relics still, we can't forget the fact that Nusho Bear neutralized the Sacred Site in the middle. So Sacred Site numbers are even, but the most important thing is that it's a 20 villager difference. And also, we have some horse archers moving in on the right side. The map presence is just exceptional here from Nusho Bear. A couple of villagers picked off here. He knows exactly that Viper is struggling for map control, and he's using those small groups of horse archers to great effect. Oh, those, those of us thinking that the Viper might have a relatively good matchup having a, a mirror a mirror on game one. Well, certainly looking a little bit tricky at this point. The scores look very, very even. The Viper, well, ahead by almost nothing. So basically a completely even score. What was a significant military advantage for the Viper looks now to be uh, an advantage for Nushal Bear. Of course, those relics are incredibly insane and, and they're going to be there for the whole game which is going to help the viper recover but now nushal bear taking the second sacred site so he's going to have those two sacred sites um at this point you'd have to think nushal bear may be slightly ahead but everything to play for i think at this point the most important thing for him is to keep doing what he's doing and start taking the sacred site he knows exactly viper is not in a position to contest the map because he has lost considerable horse archer numbers and he's got a tough time replenishing them so you want to get those sacred sites to compensate for your relic deficit and just build on the fact that viper while he does have a good gold trickle from the relics he needs to use the market to obtain food and wood he can do that with the golden gate but he has limited amount of transactions so he's gonna have to use the market but that becomes more and more inefficient you see the food price is already 162 for 100 food that is gigantic and obviously for Nushal Bear, he's just going to send villagers to food and wood. So the idea here for him is that even though Viper's got the relic advantage, the villagers matter a tiny bit more because he can just send them directly to the resources he needs to make horse archers. And we see that reflected in the huge gap in the income per minute there in, gold, in food, sorry. Look at that, 420 to 1200 food. That is a massive, massive difference. And... The Viper's difference in terms of wood and gold production is pretty negligible, so um, that's going to start putting up the pressure. And is he gonna, he's not going to quite manage to get that sacred site. Loses the warrior monk there, but Viper comes in, he gets a shot off there. Doesn't do too much uh, damage. So with the mangonel, so what do you think about the, the 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 decision there of the Viper to transition to the mangonel production? I 100% agree with that. At this point, he needs a big swing, just as. Uh... Nusha Bear did when Viper was adding relics. Viper was massively ahead compared to Nush. Nush went for Boyar's Fortitude, he needed the big swing and he got it with that exceptional fight in the middle. Now this is exactly what Viper needs, one or two good mangonel shots and even out the horse archer numbers and then Viper can cut down that villager deficit. So Viper, one of those incredible traits of, of the Viper being a player that he is, is even when he's behind He's always pressuring his opponent. I mean, he knows he's behind right now and in a bit of a sticky situation, but he doesn't sit back and try and recover. He makes sure that his opponent is always reacting to something, and that's what we're seeing happen here, uh, pushing in with this with this Manganel, which is going to do a lot of work to, to try and protect, because as long as that Manganel's on the field, it gives his opponent a lot to think about. Absolutely. This is a tricky situation for Nushal Bear to be in, because one thing that he's getting denied right now is his Lumberjacks. But you see, Nusha Bear will try to loop around, and he's got a ton of scouts out here. And the scouts are just an exceptionally good unit when it comes to torching down mangonels. And that's exactly what we're going to see happen here. The scouts are right on top of the mangonel. And while the scouts are taking down the mangonel, 
uh, there. Simultaneously, the horse archers are coming in and doing a lot of damage on the opponent. And this is going to be the fight that's going to determine how this game goes down. The Manganel goes down, and it looks like Nushalbert has a pretty good surround here. Far more units than the Viper. Viper looking in big trouble. His entire mass is going to be lost right here. And when this mass is lost, I'm not sure the Viper's got much recourse to come back to this. This looks... Like an overwhelming military advantage and GG gets called with Nushalbert taking game one uh, against the expectation of many taking a 1-0 lead in this round of 64 match. Wow, that was a clean performance from Nushalbert. Absolutely. So many things to talk about here. First and foremost, Viper had an exceptionally good start. Four relics versus one seemed really good for him. But then Nushalbert comes in with one decisive fight and as we discussed, the relic numbers are very important in mirror matchups, but also timings are exceptionally important because you can't really have an advantage over your opponent unless you are able to utilize some sort of power spike. Nushobear used that power spike perfectly, intercepted Viper's army. Viper fell behind, this gave Nushobear a window to start killing villagers, and from this point on he could basically play from an eco-advantage position. If you look at the overall resources gathered, Nushobear at the end, 2,000 more food, way less wood, for him and way less gold but obviously the most uh, significant resource cost for horse archers is food so you're going for that food and wood income and not necessarily the gold that much this fight right over here at like 15 30 is probably what uh, won the game for uh, no shell bear being able to grind down viper's numbers and from that point on Nushalbeer was fighting from a military advantage position in every single moment of this game.